World War I, an epic clash between the technological advancements of the 20th century and the strategies of the 19th century. The shape battles took and the casualties that arose were evidence that strategy and weaponry available at war's outbreak were incompatible. At the beginning of the war, Germany had the most advanced chemical industry in the world. Although the use of poison gas had been banned by the Hague Conventions of 1899 and 1907, Germany turned to this industry for weapon to break the deadlock of trench warfare. Chlorine gas was first used in April of 1915 at the Second Battle of Yankers. Although it seemed as a simple gas screen, the gas had a devastating effect, killing many defenders. Unfortunately, wind direction also killed attackers. Later, mustard gas, phosgene, and other gases were used. The first defenses against gases were mainly rags soaked in water or urine. Later, effective gas masks were produced and these greatly reduced the effectiveness of gas as a weapon. The artillery of World War I was used to bombard the trenches made after the conflict commenced, and were an important factor in the war. World War I raised artillery to a new level of importance on the battlefield. Artillery had the potential to shoot far. Because of this, enemies in trenches would no longer always be safe, and would constantly be fired upon. In some areas, artillery concentration would be common, with several artillery firing onto an area, lasting for hours. Artillery barrages would also be used before an infantry battle to create a distraction away from the place of attack. Mortars were revived by the Germans because of their ability to shoot and land directly in an enemy's trench before exploding. Artillery shells were used for gas release by the German troops in 1915, making the artillery cannon a versatile weapon. The 1914 machine gun, usually positioned on a flat tripod, required a gun crew of four to six operators. These early machine guns would rapidly overheat and become inoperative without cooling, either by water or air. The inadequate amount of water for both weapons and soldiers led to an overheat of machine guns. Cooled or not, machine guns still jammed frequently, especially in heat or when used by inexperienced soldiers. Consequently, machine guns would often be grouped together to maintain a constant defensive position. Although the tank had been suggested in the 1890s, there was no interest until the trench stalemate of World War I caused a seemingly unending war and a steady rate of high casualties. Based on the Caterpillar trap, early World War I tanks were fitted with machine guns, armor plating, and traps able to cross an 8 foot wide trench. Early tanks were unreliable and broke down often. Once tanks could be fielded in large numbers, they began to show their potential. In the Battle of Amiens, British forces fought with 534 tanks. After several days, only a few were still in working condition reflecting the shaky mechanical reliability of the weapon. Tank technology has greatly increased from the early weapons design to break the trench deadlock. In December 1905, Alfred von Schlieffen, the German Army Chief of Staff, was given instructions to devise a strategy that would be able to counter a joint attack. This was known as the Schlieffen Plan. The Schlieffen Plan was a designated attack on France when Russia had started to mobilize forces near German borders. It involved 90% of German military forces to attack France and various tactics. For example, the infiltration tactic, which involves smart forces of experienced troops sent forward to slip between the enemy's strong points on the front line. The Germans were the first to use mustard and chlorine gas. This was a gas that would slowly kill the victims since it took 12 hours to activate. The tunnel warfare, also known as mining warfare, was a strategy where men dug tunnels underneath enemy positions and then used explosives to destroy the enemy's defenses from underground. At the start of the war, there were eight machine guns per Russian battalion. Russia's high population allowed a steady supply of soldiers. Although they had this advantage, Russia had problems coordinating infantry and artillery movement slash operation. This was due to Russia's officer corps who flawed due to promotion based on influence rather than merit. Throughout it, its limited time in the war, Russia had only few successes and army experienced several changes of command. For Great Britain, the standard tactic was trench warfare. It was hoped that this would cut the barbed wire and open the way for British infantry to get into the German trenches. Unfortunately, the artillery was not very successful because of the well-established German trenches and bunkers. As a result, Britain was relying to a large extent on the French and Russians to defeat Germany. As the war raged in Europe, the United States stayed neutral. President Woodrow Wilson argued that the United States should remain neutral in this conflict, urging Americans to be impartial in thought as well as in action. Ironically, 
The U.S. went into warfare unequipped, lacking weapons, tanks, and planes. The French decided to step in and offer tanks, planes, and artillery to the U.S. Since the U.S. lacked an abundance of equipment, they used cavalry. They thought it was quicker and more dynamic than infantry. It is important to note most of these tactics were used to break the enemy lines and make ground past the trenches. Prior to World War I, many battles were fought on an open field, which was no longer an option considering the new weapons and the subsequent strategies of World War I. Overall, each country had different strategies during World War I and developed new tactics through this experience. The result of a war fought with old tactics and new weapons was a long and seemingly unending war.